Welcome to the latest episode of Honest Reviews. Today, I'm gonna to be looking at the Featherlight 4 frame from Ground Control. I've been intrigued by this frame for a little while now. I really like the design. The H block looks pretty interesting to me and some skaters that I really respect ride this frame, such as Cody Sanders from Jumbo and Ryan Parker, he swears by these, and Alex Burson also rides them. But there has been a couple of things that have been holding me back and one is that I just don't really want to support Sunshine Distribution in any way. I don't really like how they do business, especially over the years with razors. I'm not a fan of how they treat their riders and as far as I'm concerned, Sunshine owner Andy Wagner is a total snake who cannot be trusted. But a friend of mine recently tried these for a grand total of five minutes, hated them, and then asked me if I wanted them for free. So shout out Brian Keane, AKA The Weapon. Here's a couple of clips of him, just for reference, if you don't know who he is. I've talked a lot of crap over the years about Sunshine Distribution and Andy. In fact, I've even made an entire video about them. But they have done some good things in rollerblading. They've turned some skaters into absolute superstars, paid some of them really well at certain points in their history, and they have created some great products. The last time I skated any other products was the Featherlight 3, which skated for a bunch of years on several different models. The only reason I stopped skating them is because I hated the clacky anti-rockers that came in them. You'd just roll about and they'd sound really cheap and nasty and hollow. And I didn't really like the plastic. I found it quite soft on grinds and you just didn't really glide as fast as I would like. And that brings me on to my biggest reservation about this frame. I really like that it comes with a replaceable H block, although I don't know how practical that is. I know that you can swap this out and put in the aluminium HD H block if you want to, or if you're American, aluminum. Um, I guess that would be cool if you want that kind of sound of skateboard trucks on coping. But again, I don't really know how much sense that makes on solar frames, which are aluminium, you can put plastic H blocks, which would make sense if you're wanting to skate street. But in terms of taking a plastic frame and then putting an aluminium H block on it, you're gonna get all the drawbacks of a plastic frame so the energy transfer isn't gonna be as good. And then you're gonna put the aluminium block on it and it's not gonna slide as good on street either. So that kind of feels like a lose-lose for me. I feel like that would only work in a skate park and even then it wouldn't be that great. Some features I do like about the frame though, I like that it comes with axles that only fasten on one side. I think that's a great feature. I know some people find it problematic because you might strip out the bolt or do something to it, but in terms of just making it easier to set up, I really like it. I also like this H block that it comes with. It looks like it offers a lot of wheel protection and I like that it's tapered at the sides because hopefully it means there's not as much break in time. Now, these are a size two, which apparently only fit up to a size eight UK, but I'm a size nine to nine and a half UK. So by the power of editing, here you have it. I am using them on the most recent USD Team Sway. And despite the fact that this is probably a size too small for the skate, I think it actually looks okay. It doesn't look notably shorter. In fact, I think this is about 10 millimeters shorter than the size large Fluid 5 and the size large T-neck. But yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna ride it with the 58 millimeter Sam Croft undercover wheel, which you can see here, comes off Sam's Pro Aeon. And as you can see, with 58 millimeters in it, it offers a lot of divide between the second and third wheel. You've got the H block with the cupping, which is already offering a lot of protection. Then you've got a decent gap between the edge of the H block and the wheel. 
Ground control says that this can fit up to 60 millimeters flat, and I would believe that because there's quite a lot of space there. Jay Keeley, on a video that he did for Local Skates, rode them flat 62 millimeters. So if you want to go up even higher, that's an option as well. I'm going to play it safe with 58 millimeters because I'm a bit of a coward, but I'm really looking forward to skating these. Some absolutely great skaters swear by them, so are they wrong? We'll find out. As always, I am going to skate the absolute hell at these, take them to some of my favourite gritty Scottish ledges and just abuse the hell out of them, try to get a deep groove in it, see how well the plastic holds up, see if it does slide well or if it's as slow as I remember and just kind of keen to see what the energy transfer is like. Because this plastic is quite soft, it offers great cushion and doesn't tend to break as much when you're doing gaps and wall rides and taking impact on street, or at least in my experience with the Federlight 3. It will be interesting to see what the Federlight 4 is like because it's kind of a combination of having the ride height of the ground control mega frame with the H block of the HD, but still have the aesthetic of the ground control Federlight 3, which is a mouthful and I don't know if it entirely makes sense, but I'm gonna skate these in a bunch of sessions. The weather's still utterly horrible in Scotland at the moment, so there'll probably be some indoor park sessions as well, and I will let you know what I think. And we're back. I really hope you enjoyed that slam of me just absolutely turfing it onto rough gravel with glass. That was not a highlight of filming for this. I've been skating the Ground Control Federlite 4 for a couple of weeks now, so quite a few sessions. And as you can see, starting to get a significant groove on the backslide side of the frame. And also getting a notable groove on the front where I do Soul Grinds, Royales as well on the front, other stuff, can't remember. But I have been skating these for a fair while, in my opinion, put a fairly decent dent in them. And one of the first things I noticed about these was how easy it was to set up. This frame, without question, is the easiest flat frame you will ever set up. With every other one, you're having to prise it open and tap, 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 tap with a mallet. And then once you get the wheel in, especially in the second and third wheel, you're having to like jiggle about and try and get the spacer right and it won't go right because it's jammed in there so tight. And you just get so frustrated that you want to launch your skate off a wall. With these, they are easy as hell. Now, I don't know if it is because they're quite loose or just because the plastic is quite soft and bendy, but every wheel went in absolutely fine. There was no juggling about, just slotted them in there, lined them up, got the axles in, easy. Compared to the Fluid 5, which is an absolute nightmare to set up, or the Icon AG60, the black frame with the carbon in it, which is by far the hardest frame I've ever tried to set up, 
These are an absolute godsend. The first session I had on these was on that kind of tiled ledge that you saw and it started raining when I got there and just decided I was there so might as well skate it and these were lightning fast. Now I don't know if that's to do with the fact that I was skating tile which is quite fast anyway or the fact that it was wet and I'd already waxed it but these were just floating along there on royales, unities, farves, you name it. And one of the first things I noticed was zero breaking time. I think it's a lot of it is to do with the taper because it's got it's got a relatively generous groove and it's got nice cupping so it's protecting the wheels, but wasn't getting any wheel bite, wasn't slipping off, and I do think it is a lot to do with the taper. The taper is quite generous and some frames have it, like the Entente Derridari has it, but it's a little bit steeper and like not as much. So it's like, yeah, it's like a sharper taper, but not as deep. And some frames that I've used don't have it, like the T-neck frame, so you have to break it in. I think because of the taper, it just eradicates break-in time whatsoever. Everywhere I've skated this, whether it's skate park, rails, street, coping, there's just been no issues with it whatsoever. And I do think a lot of that is down to just the kind of really clever cutout there on the H block. Another thing that I was quite surprised by is because it's a shorter frame, I worried that it might not feel as stable or I might not enjoy it as much because I've been used to riding 270 millimeter frames. And I think this is, I think it's 259 but it doesn't actually look notably shorter and I don't think it looks weird like, yeah, some examples that I'm not gonna name. And I found that because it was shorter, it had greater maneuverability. It was, you know, strides were a lot easier, turning and carving was a lot easier. So going for a shorter frame, I think might actually have been of benefit. It might be something I would do again in the future, although I don't know that I would go any smaller than 259 because then it would look a little bit weird in the skate. The most annoying thing about this frame is how much I enjoy it. I was really hoping to tear it apart, break it somehow, or just wear it down really quickly, and it would give me an opportunity to slag off ground control, and as a result, Andy Wagner. Unfortunately, that has not been the case. I annoyingly really, really like these. I think they're really well designed. I really like the taper. I really like the fact that it's got the one-sided axles. It slides well. My only kind of criticism of it would be that it doesn't slide as fast as some of the other flat frames on the market. So it definitely doesn't slide as fast as the Entente Derridari or the Icon AG60 or the T-neck Michael Craft. I would say it probably slides better than the Fluid 5. And with every flat frame that I'm trying, the Fluid 5 is going down more and more in my estimations. I think because this is one of the first flat frames that I tried second or third, that it just kind of gave me a false impression of how good it was because this is definitely preferable to the Fluid 5. And if you put them together, I think this is 270 millimeters. This is a large Fluid 5, but if you put it together with the small ground control Fiddle Light 4, the H block is actually the same width and offers the same level of cupping and protection for the wheels, but because this has got a nice mellower groove, it's not as kind of intense when you're trying to grind and switch up on it and you don't get caught out as much. And like I said, this doesn't have a taper, whereas this does. And yeah, I'm coming to realize that that's something that I want from a frame. I want that straight out the box. I do really like the T-neck now that I've broke it in and I'm definitely gonna be sticking with the T-neck for the standard Omni that I skate, but this has changed my opinion on ground control frames. I thought it would be a lot slower than it was. It wasn't as fast as I would like, but it definitely wasn't notably bad. I was just I was just aware that I wasn't sliding as fast as I was on those other three frames. So I would say ground control are onto a winner with the Federlite 4. I didn't want to like it. I really, really didn't want to like it. And unfortunately I find myself been a bit of a fan of it. Am I gonna skate it much in the future? Probably not, just on principle, because 
I do still believe there are better flat frames out there, like I've mentioned on Taunt Diary, Icon AG60, T-Neck Michael Craft. I did a poll on my YouTube channel to see how many people skate this, how many people like it, how many people don't like it. And I was quite surprised that a lot of people just haven't even tried this frame yet. So if you're in the market for one, or if it comes on a set of razors that you get, I would give it a try because it's definitely a good frame. It offers a lot of protection, a lot of safety if you're worried about catching your wheels or wheel bite or whatever. And I would say it's wearing down relatively fast, especially on the sides. I am noticing the plastic coming off a little bit, but that just could be initial wear and tear. I'm going to keep riding these on this skate, probably. And I'm going to skate the T-necks on the standard Omni, which have just arrived. So I'll report back in a couple of months or whatever and let you know how they're doing, let you know how they're wearing down. But they are already starting to wear into the frame wall. So time will tell how much they last. As always, want to give a giant shout out to my Patreon supporters. They are listed on the screen now. You can join the Wheel Scene Patreon for as little as £3 a month. There are a ton of videos on there that are not on the YouTube channel, that will never go on the YouTube channel. And it's the best way to support what I do with Wheel Scene. So once again, thanks for watching and speak to you guys soon.